Hey guys, how is it going? I hope you guys are doing well. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Film Life Vlog. I'm so glad you guys joined me. So anyways, I just got back from Calgary. Uh, Calgary is fast becoming one of my favorite uh, cities in Canada to visit and um, I've been to most of the cities, most of the major cities that is in Canada and I must say that Calgary, maybe Calgary and Vancouver are actually in Montreal of course, are my favorite cities to uh, visit but lately Calgary is really ranking up high up there on my list of favorite places to visit but anyways it was a work related trip I had been invited uh, by one of the companies that I work with so this was a steeplechase event that the company organized uh, for partners people that work with that particular company I'm not gonna name the name of the company but um, it was a really wonderful event lots of professionals at that event um, and uh, I was there with a colleague a senior colleague uh, actually my boss as well and uh, it was great it was wonderful the event was wonderful um, but you know whenever I travel for these events I always try to bring uh, a camera with me and I, I had originally planned to bring my Minota Maxim 7000 camera here and this was the plan that I was going to shoot with this camera because I I really love this camera this this is a beautiful camera guys this has become one of my favorite cameras to shoot with and the reason why I like this camera so much is because really of the automatic features uh, there are some 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 situations uh, I would rather not have to think about the settings of my camera I just go out there pull out my camera and I shoot with it and I know I'm gonna get really good and decent results and that's why I really like this camera right so I that was the plan and then somehow you know uh, on my way to Calgary I had to go through Edmonton and um, I stopped uh, by my favorite um, it's an antique mall that I, I tend to visit every now and then whenever I'm in uh, Edmonton. So I stopped by my, my favorite antique mall and guess what I saw? <laughs> so I saw this camera in the display. And the moment I saw it, I was intrigued by it because um, as some of you know, I don't really have a lot of Nikon cameras. I have a ton of Canons, uh, Canon SLRs. I have a lot of uh, Pentax SLRs. I have a, 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 a quite a few uh, Minota SLRs. But uh, and I, maybe Olympus. Olympus, I have one or two Olympus cameras. But uh, when it comes to Nikons, I only have the Nikon EM, which I, I I showcased in one of the episodes when I was actually trying to purchase it, and I'll put the link for that video right up there. You can click it and add it to your playlist. So I've always been on the lookout for Nikon SLRs. So when I saw this in the display, I was like, yes, I'm going for this camera. And then I saw the price tag, and I was like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> Um, basically, it was it was too it was pricey. I thought one hundred and twenty eight dollars, which was the price tag for this camera. I was like, uh, that's a little too rich for my my liking. Um, even though I, I looked on eBay and saw that most of these cameras were going for about two hundred dollars, some two fifty, and I was like, okay, okay, maybe I can do one twenty eight, but that's still really too high. Fortunately for me, the vendor, because it's an antique mall, you have the vendors, different vendors come and they display their words, right? So th this particular vendor was actually in the store at the time that I visited. And I, the lady uh, the attendant basically directed me to him. And I had a chat with him and I'm like, hey, I'm really interested in your camera. How was the lowest that you're willing to go for? And he's like, well, I don't know anything about these cameras. Well, just give me 80 and I'll take it. I was like, 80, whoa. I had to control my excitement there. And I basically jumped right at it. I was like, $80, that's a really good deal. 
for this camera. So this camera is a Nikon FE camera. You can tell the branding right there. It's really not very pronounced. All you see is the Nikon in the front and the F FE brand in the back. But um, I was so excited. I picked up this camera. So now on the way to Calgary, I had two cameras with me and uh, I was like, well, that's gonna be a film camera party when I get to Calgary. So um, so what I did was I decided not to shoot with uh, just one camera, but to shoot with two cameras. And I, I wanted to use this as an opportunity to also test out and to compare, right? Because I know how this camera performs. I love this camera and I, I this, this was an unknown to me, right? The lens, so the lens on this camera it's actually a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, it's a Nikkor lens um, and it's uh, F2. And you can see right there. So it's F2. So in terms of aperture, lowest aperture is not like the best. I mean, F2 will not give you um, uh, the depth of field that an F1.4 or F1.6 or 7 would give you, right? Uh, so I wanted to test it out and see how it goes. So the event itself was really awesome. I um, had an opportunity to interact with a lot of people. I had an opportunity to see all this wonderful pomp and pageantry. It was really awesome. Really wonderful day. And um, I shot one roll with a Minolta Maxim 7000. And I shot uh, three rolls with uh, my Nikon FE camera. When I came home, I actually developed the film right away. And I must say that uh, looking at the two different uh, cameras and, and looking at the images, which I'm going to showcase soon, uh, my general impression was uh, they perform pretty much on par with each other. Um, in terms of preference, if I were to go for preference, it would be really hard, difficult for me to choose uh, between the Minota camera and the, and the, and the Nikon. Um, but I would say for ease of use, I would give it to the Minota uh, because it's, it was the camera did a really awesome job. Uh, just selecting all the good settings for me and uh, I didn't have to think about it uh, For the Nikon it was the first time shooting with it. It was uh, I shot it in aperture priority mode um, so uh, I find that I still had to think about some of the settings I mean it was it was a breeze really but the most difficulty that I had and I'm gonna be honest was with the focusing I guess because I was so spoiled with the Minota which basically focuses right away gets me the right focus and I'm able to go uh, right away I don't have to think twice it it always gives me a wonderful uh, focus the focusing system on that camera is just amazing right but for this camera I had to do my own focusing I guess I got a bit spoiled with that so oftentimes I'm walking and even walking in the town and uh, my focusing um, wasn't quite on point i would say but for the most part it was good but i, I mean from my own critical eye i can tell that oh even though this is good i was actually trying to focus on this particular thing so that was one thing that it was the focusing was a bit uh it was i wouldn't say challenging but i would say a bit uh off uh for my nikon but the camera itself when the focusing was on point the camera, the, the images were just sweet. I mean, it's just like, it's just like gold. I mean, when I developed the film and just looking at the images on the negatives, man, that just looked like, it just looked like gold. They were just glistening. And, and that's one thing I really love about those, uh, about film photography. It's just um, after you see your images appear on your negatives and you just look at them, if it's a really nice exposure, it just it just shows it just shows and it was just beautiful so over overall I, I i'm a fan of this camera this camera is awesome um this camera is is just beautiful to shoot with i would say it's so luxury um it just screams luxury this camera this camera screams luxury at you um one thing that i noticed uh, when i first got it was um 
when it's when the lever the film advance lever is in this position that's when you can actually shoot right when it's in this position it's the lock position this, this, this is not common this is not how my other cameras operate my other cameras oftentimes have a dedicated uh, lock uh, switch uh, but not this camera this is the, the switch and then if you want to shoot you you have to bring it down and then now your shutter release is actually uh, engaged so this was a bit of an of a learning curve for me um, there's also the ability to shoot multiple exposures uh, when you advance you basically push on this little uh, tab here as you advance and then it won't actually advance the film but it allows you to crank the shutter so that's the ability to shoot multiple exposures is right there which is really convenient um, the shutter speed goes from one uh, it goes up to one one uh, one one thousandth of a second uh, which is pretty nice um, this is just a really uh, course overview uh, I'm going to do a, a proper review of this camera um, but the experience of shooting with this camera was amazing the viewfinder on this camera is huge and it's lovely. I love cameras that have a, a big viewfinder on it. Everything about this camera really was on point, except for maybe my own fault with uh, the focusing. I mean, I was walking, I was excited. Oftentimes I wasn't taking the time to actually focus on things properly to get my focus sharp and that's my fault. Uh, but this camera just performs amazingly. Um, the other thing that I would say is the self timer. The self timer is great on this camera. It actually works. Um, there's also your ability to lock uh, your your AE lock is basically pushing or using the same self timer. And as you uh, if you push this inwards towards the lens, that's your AE lock. It locks your exposure, and then you're able to shoot. Uh, with that particular setting So as I talked about in my previous video on how to shoot like a pro the link is right there added to your playlist I talked about AE lock as one of the main ways that uh, you can you can shoot as a pro uh, This camera has that feature built in nicely there the uh, The light meter which is built into this camera is qu actually quite amazing So it's a manual indicator you will see the indicator swing uh, Up if it's overexposed and down if it's underexposed and right in the middle if it's uh, The exposure is correct and then you're able to adjust your settings on the aperture and the shutter speed to match to bring it to the right uh, to, to the middle um, You could also technically adjust your ISO uh, if you're pushing or pulling film uh, but that's up to you right so overall um, like I said the images were pretty much comparable but they were both lovely from these two cameras and at this point I'm going to showcase the images right here enjoy <music>
Hey, so welcome back. And I hope you guys enjoyed looking at those images. I must say, I love these two cameras. These cameras are amazing. I would recommend, uh, I would recommend both cameras actually for a beginner and film photographer. If you're a beginner, choice of cameras I can't emphasize this enough the choice of cameras that you choose as a beginner is really really important guys so if you're watching this and you're interested in film photography uh, don't um, I wouldn't say cheap enough because these cameras aren't really that expensive but don't compromise on the kind of camera to start with. I would say go for an SLR. Um, I have a video that I made especially dedicated to uh, beginners in how to choose your camera. The link will be up there added to your playlist. But this, these two cameras I would recommend for any beginner that is interested in, I would say more, more like an, a, an, uh, a motivated beginner. Um, if you really want to learn about film photography, if you really want to learn about photography in general, I would actually recommend uh, this camera over here if you are more like you just want to have fun you want to explore film photography I would recommend this camera this is a fun fun camera and you can shoot this camera in auto mode and not even have to know anything about the settings it's just really that great so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the vlog as always guys if you did enjoy this video, would you mind uh, sharing this video on your social media? That would be really awesome. And uh, if you can click the like button, I would really appreciate that. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. That really keeps me motivated. And I really appreciate all of you who are my longtime uh, subscribers and those of you that have subscribed recently. So while I was in Calgary, I visited uh, a, a camera store and I actually met two folks out there, uh, one guy and one lady. And they were both interested in film. I had a really nice conversation with them. Uh, one of them actually subscribed to this channel. So if you're out there and you know yourself, you subscribe to this channel, uh, shout out to you um, really appreciate uh, talking to young people that are interested in film it really always fascinates me uh, as I had that interest I know how it feels like and it was really awesome uh, just just interacting with with them and just getting to know why why they were interested in film and I tell you a lot of people are starting to see uh, just the beauty of film and that's one of my goals with this channel is to be an ambassador for film so um, I really thank you guys all all of you for subscribing and for keeping this going um, yeah so until the next time guys I hope you have a wonderful wonderful day and as always guys stay safe